We welcome everyone joining us today from around the world for the third webinar in our Multiverse webinar series. Today's webinar will be on the Multiverse node. I'm John DeMoose of City Theatrical, and I'll be your presenter today. Let's take a look at our full Multiverse webinar series to give you an idea of what we've been reviewing and what you can learn from our upcoming webinars. In our first webinar, we looked at the breakthrough features of the multiverse technology and how it's different than any other wireless DMX system in the world. We talked about why and how it was developed and why it represented the future of wireless DMX technology and how it cha can change the way we do our lighting. In our second webinar, we learned about our simple plug and play 2.4 gigahertz multiverse show baby and how it's compatible with all previous show babies ever made as well as with multiverse technology. Today, I'll tell you about our multiverse node, which contains both 2.4 gigahertz and 900 megahertz radios, and it is a single universe transceiver that can be used to create a single universe broadcast system, which is our primary receiver on multiple universe systems. On Thursday, May 28th, we'll go deep into the multiverse transmitter, which contains four different radios and which can broadcast as many as 10 universes from one transmitter. In that webinar, we'll show you how to set up a complex, multiple universe broadcast. On Thursday, June 4th, you'll learn about wireless dimming. We'll describe on how our Colorflex 5 by 2.5 amp, 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz multiverse dimmer sets up and operates, as well as teach you about another even smaller dimmer for props and costumes, our newest Colorflex 2 by 2.5 amp, 2.4 gigahertz multiverse dimmer. And last but not least, on Thursday, June 11th, we'll show, we'll show you our multiverse receiver card, which allows anyone, whether they are an electrician, prop builder, tinkerer, or inventor, to implement a tiny multiverse receiver into any DMX device. Along the way, we'll also talk about wireless DMX best practices, site surveys, optimizing your broadcast to get maximum fidelity without interfering with other radio systems in your venue, working with specialized antennas, and other radio concepts which are not necessarily intuitive or obvious to the average user of wireless DMX. Those of you who watch, all six webinars will come away with a good understanding of the advances in wireless DMX that Multiverse has made possible. If you happen to miss any of these webinars, don't worry, it will live on as recordings on the Multiverse pages on our website, citytheatrical.com slash multiverse. Wireless DMX is a 20-year-old technology, and there are many users of it today, from the top of professional lighting all the way to high schools and garage bands. This webinar series is aimed at users with a basic understanding of wireless DMX. If you are new to wireless DMX or want to reinforce your fundamentals, you can find lots of helpful information on the Downloads tab of all the multiverse pages of our website, including manuals, quick start guides, case studies, and white papers. You may want to start with our white papers, what you need to know about wireless DMX and how advances in wireless DMX will change the way we do lighting. These two white papers will give you a good baseline understanding of wireless DMX technology. If you have any questions today, please type them into the Q&A box at the top of your screen. You may need to click on the Q&A tab to open that Q&A box. Be sure to address your questions to all panelists, which enables me to see them. Now it is time for our swag giveaway. One listener will earn a City Theatrical t-shirt just for logging on to today's webinar. We'll reach into the fishbowl and pick out a name and it is Eric. Congratulations, Eric. We will contact you by email and make the arrangements to get your shirt. Now let's get into the learning portion of our webinar for today on the Multiverse Node. This is the Multiverse Wireless DMX RDM family of products as it stands today. Although, of course, we are always adding products to it. Today, we are going to be looking at the Multiverse node, which you can see on the right with the box around it. First, a note about radio frequencies we use. Until Multiverse, all of our wireless DMX products have been in the 2.4 gigahertz band. With Multiverse, we have added 900 megahertz radios, which are certified for use. In North America only. As the 2.4 gigahertz band continues to get more and more crowded, 
and moving some or all of your broadcast to 900 megahertz gives a great new option to North American users. Briefly, since we explored this in our first webinar on multiverse technology, while both 2.4 gigahertz and 900 megahertz are good choices for wireless DMX, they have slightly different characteristics. 2.4 gigahertz can carry more data than 900 megahertz, but 900 megahertz can pass through objects better and travel greater distances. The 900 megahertz band is also generally less crowded than 2.4 gigahertz. We're sometimes asked why we don't utilize the 5.8 gigahertz band for wireless DMX. The reason is that it doesn't travel as far as 2.4 gigahertz and it doesn't pass through objects very well, often requiring line of sight operation. These, these reasons make it difficult to use successfully for wireless DMX for lighting use, although it is used su su successfully for other uses in the entertainment technology world. Using, using 5.8 gigahertz for those purposes helps reduce the overall crowding in 2.4 gigahertz band. The multiverse node is a single universe transceiver. That means it can be configured as either a transmitter or a receiver, and that choice of transmitter or receiver is entirely plug-in. Multiverse nodes can be used to create single universe broadcast systems with one node acting as a transmitter and one or more nodes acting as receivers. It is also used as the primary receiver on multiple universe systems when used with a multiverse transmitter. The multiverse node comes in two models. Part number 5902 contains both the 2.4 gigahertz and the 900 megahertz radios, and the user can choose which radio to utilize. This, is, this product is for use only in North America. Part number 5903 contains one 2.4 gigahertz radio and is for use worldwide. Today, we'll be discussing part number 5902, the dual radio version, but all of its setup configuration and use applies to part number 5903 also, except for the option of choosing the 900 megahertz radio. All multiverse products contain many new breakthrough technologies. We'll review them briefly today, but you can learn about them in depth by listening to the first webinar in the series on multiverse technology. Here is an overview of the breakthrough multiverse technologies, a technology we call multiverse DMX or MDMX is an encapsulization of the DMX 512 standard for wireless transmission that produces a dramatic reduction in radio energy used. A technology we called multiverse RDM or MRDM, which is an encapsulization of the RDM standard for wireless transmission that improves wireless RDM performance. Show key security. Show key is an additional three digit code that can be added to the multiverse show ID that will, that will prevent any other system set on the same show ID from interfering with your system. Forward error correction, which allows the receiver to detect and correct errors that may occur in the wireless transmission of data. Ultra low latency. There's an average system latency of four milliseconds. User selectable adaptive spread spectrum frequency hopping identifies and masks up hopping channels that contain interference, replacing them in the hop sequence with alternate channels. Adjustable output power. Sometimes an application calls for the maximum available broadcast power, but many times you can utilize lower output power to reduce problems with other radio interference in the venue, reduce reflections, and really improve at performance. User selectable show IDs. City Theatrical has always produced wireless DMX products that allowed the user to select the optimum transmission method. Users may select full bandwidth hopping, hopping limited to a section of the spectrum, including areas of the spectrum outside of the Wi-Fi range, or adaptive hopping. Multiverse nodes are able to utilize multiverse show IDs to speak the multiverse language, and also utilize show DMX Neo show IDs to speak show DMX Neo language. I'll show you how a system of two multiverse nodes is set up. We'll begin by looking at what comes in a multiverse node box. There are five items, the 5902 or 5903 node itself, a dual band omnidirectional antenna, the mounting bracket and screws, and a universal plug kit for the 12 volt power supply with locking barrel. 
and a multiverse locking barrel connector lead in case you want to run your system on battery power. Here is how we can begin to set up a system. Let's start by attaching the antenna and it just screws on. Now let's look at the plug kit. It is a universal plug kit that works in many countries around the world. I'll be setting up this in the United States, so I'll pick the US style barrel blade plug and install it. The universal AC adapter accepts 100 to 240 volts AC and is 50 to 60 hertz. If I were going to hang my node from a pipe or a truss, I would install the mounting bracket with the four screws just like this. You can mount a C-clamp, a hook clamp, a half coupler to the hole, and a safety cable, safety cable to the small hole. Remember to keep your transmitters and receivers as high as possible and preferably line of sight. We reviewed wireless DMX best practices in our second webinar on the Multiverse Show Baby. All nodes are transceivers, which means they can either be a transmitter or a receiver. And in the Multiverse node, just like the Multiverse Show Baby, that show is entirely plug and play, and it happens automatically for you. And here's how it's done. I'll plug into my two nodes, just power, no data, and observe the user interface. The RX light comes on and are blinking, which signifies no DMX data present. The node's default state is to be a receiver. That means when it is powered up with nothing plugged into it, it will always be a receiver. In the system I'm setting up, I'll have one multiverse node as a transmitter and one as a receiver, and that's a simple point-to-point -point system. Of course, you can have multiple receivers with any one transmitter. In fact, there's no limit to the number of receivers you can have on one transmitter, as long as you don't exceed the 512 slots of data. Now, if you look into the DMX in port on the back of a node, you'll see a tiny white switch. When a DMX cable from your lighting controller is inserted into that port, that tiny switch is triggered and the node automatically switches itself to become a transmitter. There are two nodes side by side with power and no data. The RX symbol is blinking to show no data. Watch what happens when you plug a DMX cable from your console into your node. The receiver RX changes to TX for transmitter and the TX light goes solid, signifying that DMX is now present. On the other node, which remains a receiver in our system, the status RX starts, stops blinking, meaning that DMX is now being received and the signal strength bars appear to show that they are receiving a strong signal. Now you have a real system set up and they are broadcasting from our transmitting node to our receiver node. And if you plug a DMX cable into the DMX out port of your receiver, we'll have DMX at our target device exactly as if we had run a cable all the way from our lighting controller. Let's try it. I have my lighting fixture assigned to DMX1 and when I push up fader one on my controller, I have control of the fixture. Here's red, then green, and then blue. Now that your system is running, let's look at a few ways to judge the system's performance and some ways we can improve it. The signal quality bars on the user interface tells us a lot. Three or four bars means excellent quality. Two bars are accept acceptable and one bar is marginal. As we discussed in our show, in our Multiverse Show Baby webinar, to improve signal quality, you can improve the placement of your transmitter or receiver. Remember, higher is better, and check that your omnidirectional antennas are vertical and parallel to each other. If those actions don't help, sometimes specialized antennas, such as a panel antenna or a Yagi antenna, can. Let's study how that works. Nearly all Wireless DMX gear sold today comes with an omnidirectional antenna because it is a good all-purpose antenna and that works well in a variety of uses. The omnidirectional antennas produce a donut or apple-shaped radiation pattern depending on the DBI of the antenna. Generally, if you place an omni antenna in the center of a theater or studio, it can reach receivers placed nearly everywhere in the building. Here's what it looks like in an arena. The Omni antenna is perfect for this application. But think of an application where you are only broadcasting to one area. In this case, our transmitter is on the balcony rail 
and our receiver is on the stage, a very common setup. If we use an omni antenna, 75% of our radio energy is directed to places it really isn't needed. In, this, in a case like this, it is beneficial to use a panel antenna. It emits radio energy with about a 60 degree spread rather than 360 degree spread of an omni. Now, 100% of your radio energy is directed to where you need it, and the signal quality will be increased. Radio output power can often be decreased when using panel antennas since the radio energy is being used so efficiently. Yagi antennas have a spread of about 30 degrees and are good for long distance broadcasts, particularly outdoors. Here are some outdoor applications using antennas, using a panel and Yagi antennas for long distance broadcasts. In webinar two on Multiverse Show Baby, we discussed City Theatrical's use of the show ID to set the basic radio broadcast parameters and for linking the transmitting unit with all receiving units. Show Baby has a default show ID of 201, and its show IDs are reachable through its onboard user interface with all three digits, such as 102, 117, and 165. While Multiverse Show Baby wakes up with a show DMX show ID and with Multiverse show IDs inside and re always reachable through RDM, Multiverse, Multiverse Node wakes up with a Multiverse show ID and the show DMX Neo show IDs are reachable through the user interface or through RDM. Today, I'll go deeper into show IDs as they relate to Multiverse. This diagram shows how a multiverse show ID is created. The first one or two digit shows the area of the spectrum in which we will need to broadcast either 24 for 2.4 gigahertz or nine for 900 megahertz. The next digit shows the data rate, which is, which is determined by how many universes we'll be broadcasting as well as the distance we need to broadcast. The next digit shows the area within the broadcast band that we are targeting. Zero is full band, one is low band, two is mid band, three is high band, and four is extremely high band channels only, and five is adaptive hopping. And the final digit shows the hopping pattern. When we did our setup earlier, I used a pair of multiverse nodes straight out of the box on their default settings, and they linked together with no changes at all. Now, I will explore the other ways of setting up a multiverse node to tune it to meet the needs of your production and other menu options found on the user interface. Remember, the show ID, the universe, and the optional show key must match between the transmitter and all the receivers. The arrow buttons on the user interface toggle between show ID and the universe. Those settings can be changed by either pushing enter and arrowing to a new setting or pushing enter again. If we wanted to direct our broadcast to the lower end of the spectrum only, you could choose show ID 24210. That selects the 2.4 gigahertz radio, a good data rate, and directs our broadcast to the lowest end of the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. If we wanted to change wanted the same low end of the spectrum, but wanted to broadcast in the 900 megahertz band, we could choose 9210 as our show ID. That is for North American version part number 5902 only. In a single universe system with a multiverse node as a transmitter, you can leave the universe on its default setting, universe one, just to be sure it matches the universe setting on the transmitting node. On multiple universe system, node, nodes in the system may be on a variety of universes when they are receiving from a multi, multiverse transmitter since the multiverse transmitter is capable of broadcasting as many as 10 universes. Any multiverse node acting as a receiver that is set on any universe that is not being broadcast by a multiverse transmitter, either a transmitter or a node, will show its universe in a yellow color to prompt you to adjust it. We'll go even deeper into universe settings in our webinar on multiverse transmitter when we'll be working on multiple universe setups. On the menu set, screen, we'll show, which I'll show you in a moment, you can set an optional show key, providing a further extension of the show ID that will prevent it 
any other system nearby set on the same show ID from interfering with your system. Again, the show ID, the universe, and the optional show key must match between the transmitter and all the receivers to be in communication. The menu screen gives other setup options, and this varies slightly, whether the multiverse node is acting as a transmitter or a receiver. When it is a receiver, power output power may be selected as low, medium, high, or maximum. If an antenna other than the default Omni is used, the antenna is selected here for optimum performance and to remain in compliance with the FCC and other radio compliance regulations. An optional show key can be set. RDM traffic downstream of the node is turned on here. Blacklight, timeout, and level are set here. When it is a transmitter, output power can be adjusted. If an antenna other than the default Omni is used and the antenna is selected here, an optional show key can be set. Forward error correction can be turned on or off. MDMX can be turned on or off. RDM traffic downstream of the node can be turned on or off. And the backlight timeout level are set here. We've now seen a quick setup with the default settings and have learned how to change those default settings to suit the particular needs of our production by using the onboard user interface screen of the multiverse node. Let's take a look at now at what we can be seen by looking inside our multiverse node with RDM. Multiverse node is an RDM proxy and an RDM responder. RDM proxy means that it functions exactly like a cable and that anything downstream of the node can be seen through RDM. RDM responder means that the multiverse nodes are RDM devices themselves capable of reporting back to the RDM controller data such as signal strength at the receivers, circuit board temperature, and setting items such as output power, the device label, and show ID. We studied RDM in our Multiverse Show Baby webinar, and you can review RDM in greater depth here or in our DMX Cat YouTube video. Like we did with the Multiverse Show Baby, we'll use our DMX Cat as an RDM controller. Here is the product info, sensors, and manufacturer screens. They are pretty much duplicate what you would see on the onboard user interface. So why would you need to use it? Imagine a case when your Multiverse node is high on the truss and you want to check your receiver's signal quality. By plugging your DMX cat into the DMX chain, you can see any information built into the multiverse node without being next to it. This is great if after raising the truss, you need to change the DMX address or the show ID or any other broadcast parameter. If you watched our webinar on the multiverse show baby, you no doubt have seen the similarities between show baby and multiverse node. They're both plug and play single universe transceivers. The multiverse show baby has one foot planted squarely in the show DMX Neo world since its default show ID is the Neo show ID. It's, it's, it's designed to be as simple as possible to enable the many thousands of show baby users to continue to add to their systems. Multiverse node ramps up the technology to a higher level by adding a 900 megahertz radio, an onboard user interface and a metal case. And by having a default show ID that is a multiverse ID, it is positioned to be a primary receiver used in larger multiple universe systems with a multiverse transmitter. We'll discuss that in next week's webinar on the multiverse transmitter. That's about it for the end of the day, but there is much more we can do to help you learn, and I hope you join us for our upcoming webinars. In these upcoming webinars, we'll go deeper into the setup and use of multiverse particularly complex multiple universe systems and how your wireless DMX broadcast can be set up to achieve the highest possible fidelity while having the least effect on any other users around. And in each of our webinars, you'll learn something extra like wireless DMX best practices, using RDM with our DMX cat, how to improve your broadcast by using specialized antennas and how to perform wireless DMX site surveys. Contact the City Theatrical offices in the U.S. or the U.K., our website, citytheatrical.com, our Facebook page, 
where we're always posting information on new projects or any of our great city theatrical dealers around the world for more information on city theatricals products. We have time for some questions. Let's see. Um, can I use this with a battery? Uh, yes, you can use the locking barrel uh, with bare ends that's included with it to attach to a 5 volt or a 30 volt battery. Um, is there a quick way to set back to factory defaults? Yeah, there is uh, by pressing the menu and the enter buttons on the user interface, it'll reset it or by using RDM on the product info tab. Um, can you explain more about why I might have to use a show key? Well, show key is an extension of the show ID. It's, you don't have to use it, but if you were in an environment where there might be other multiverse nodes set on the same show ID, such as default, the default show ID 24250, that node may be inadvertently take control of your system. By adding the show key, the other node won't disrupt your broadcast. Like if you have two theaters or there's another show next door. Um, why would I want to turn off RDM traffic downstream of my receiving node? Some like lighting fixtures do not react well to RDM and keeping RDM off while you need to use it prevents any odd flickering problems and is also the default setting. Um, do you need to change antennas when switching the node from 2.4 gigahertz to 900 megahertz? Uh, no, the standard antenna is a dual band 2 dBi uh, for 900 megahertz and 4 dBi for 2.4 gigahertz. So it's the same antenna. Uh, and uh, are there fixture updates? Um, yes, there are fixture updates available all the time on our website, day or night. Uh, check for the updates and you can download the current version of software uh, from the website. Uh, it's located uh, whether it's by the uh, uh, fixture, so the 5911, the 5910, or 5912, and there's a step-by-step -step instructions on how to do that when you download the uh, installer. Uh, let's see, I think that's about it for questions. Uh, you can always reach out to us by email, always happy to answer questions. Thank you for uh, joining us today and all this, this webinar and all the other webinars will be posted on our website, citytheatrical.com slash multiverse. Take care.